Remember, we'll be back after summer. Yeah. I'm gonna claim summer never ever ends. Okay, so um, Norm is back everywhere. Yeah. Like he's on the internet. Oh, well, he hasn't he been on any of the other podcast sites. He's been doing this book tour. I think he's only been doing radio mostly. Um, he was on the Howard Stern show. He was on the Adam Carolla podcast to... about a month ago. Well, I don't listen to no, I just Googled. I just look up what Norm MacDonald has been on. Uh, <laughs> and I just and then you, like, read a transcript? Uh, yeah. No, like, they usually upload it to YouTube or something. Oh, or yeah. Adam Carolla podcast website. And the Adam Carolla one was probably the best one. Because, like, it's so hard to ask Norm, like, serious questions. Yeah. Like, he's dodging and telling jokes, <laughs> changing the subject. <laughs> but I just finished reading his book also. Um, based on a true story, a memoir by Norm MacDonald. You sure about that? Well, that's the name of the book. <laughs> There's a meaning that's what it is. Right? Well, it's based on. Yeah. But I finished it. It's like one of the funniest books ever. Sounds it's like, like it. it's like he told real stories, but anytime the story got boring, he'd make it outlandishly funny. <laughs> <laughs> Save it with humor. Yeah. <laughs> he does a lot of morphine in the book. Morphine. Like, basically, it feels like Norm MacDonald's take on the genre of celebrity autobiographies yeah where it's like they have to have like the drug period where they're at their lowest you know like because it's still like even though it's an autobiography it still has to have like a story arc you know yeah so like he's basically doing that and it's so ridiculous like he has a morphine problem (laughs) for some reason and like you could it because every time he does the morphine, he does it in a different way. Like, the first time he shoots it with a needle, and then the next time he, like, dips oh, his Oh, morphine. Yeah. I thought you said morphing, like, he morphs into something. <laughs> like a superhero. <laughs> or, like... I don't know. No, like the drug. It was uh, morphine. <laughs> oh, morphine? <laughs> I say morphine. I don't know. Um... But anyway, like, the first time he does, he shoots it with a needle. Then the next time he, like, dips his cigarette in it and smokes his cigarette. And then the next time he does it out of a pipe. <laughs> and the next time he does, takes, like, a tablet or something. Like, I don't... Do you know what more... Like, he just picked a drug and claimed to do it. In the various ways that you do drugs. It's like, he could say he was on cocaine. Like, that's probably, like, the one in most celebrity autobiographies, right? Like, I don't think you hit rock bottom because you're, like, high all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know, like, on weed. Um, oh, of course not. But then he has that going for him. And he, Adam Eager is his uh, assistant in the book. And it's basically... Like, his assistant through his life? Or? Yeah, like, the story goes that he met Adam Eager jerking off punks. Under the Queensboro Bridge. Um, Gross. And he, like, while well, he was starting to work at Saturday Night Live in New York. So that's, and then he made Adam Ega his assistant. Because Adam Ega could drive, Norm doesn't. <laughs> that's it. That's the only reason. <laughs> He's so mean to Adam Ega, too. They, all, they get into all kinds of wacky adventures together. Because... It's a weird story too because it's told from from basically it's Norm like in the present and he's having flashbacks to his reminiscing parts in his life. Like most of the time he's like it's like he'll shoot some morphine <laughs> and then he gets all drugged up enough to remember the past and he'll start telling the story. <laughs> Oh, like, present-day Norm is... Yeah, so, he's on morphine, and then, like, he starts retelling stories during different parts of the... Because apparently he 
decides to go gamble his entire life savings on a hunch. <laughs> so and then immediately he makes Adam Egret quit his job at the world famous comedy store. And because like like Norm's like, I need you to drive me to Vegas. I can't do that, Norm. I'm not your assistant anymore. I I have a job. I'm at the world famous comedy store. Don't think I forgot what happened under the Queensboro Bridge. <laughs> Norm, you said you wouldn't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah. So then Egot has to quit his job, drive Norm to Vegas, where, you know... And, like, on the way there, he tells some stories. And, like, in their hotel room, he tells stories. Every time he tells a story, he gets high on morphine, though. <laughs> Before he tells it. So it's a morphine-induced flashback? Yeah. And Adam Egget fa- falls in love in the book. With the dude? <laughs> you guessed it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. That was one of the best lines. Like, like it turns out she was a man. Like, <laughs> oh. she showed me really close, right in my face. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But man, like every part of the thing was hilarious. We're talking about Norm Macdonald. I read a book, and it's Norm Macdonald's book. Shlomo. Uh, Sounds like a good book. Oh man, it was the best. Like he does have some serious moments, and they're always like, like, oh man, that was pretty deep. <laughs> like what? Um, he has a story, um, where he meets a Make a Wish kid, and like the kid claims that he wants to go to SNL, like to see an episode of SNL be made. But then, like, the kid pulls Norm, like, and, like, aside, and he tells him, like, he actually wants to club a baby seal before he dies. <laughs> so then Norm has to take him on a club to, like, Canada to go see club sealing or seal clubbing. <laughs> Going clubbing. So I'm not sure how much of that is true. Yeah. Who knows if any of it is true. Um, is there anything in oh, there? Oh, when he meets the undercover cop, that was the best. That was great. Um, it was basically like he, because he asked Colin, because when he works at Saturday Night Live, he works with Sarah Silverman, and she's dating Dave Attell at the time. And so he goes to, and but like Norm is in love with Sarah Silverman. So he goes to Colin Quinn, because Colin Quinn's from New York. Yeah. And, he's, and he asks Colin Quinn sense. to hook him up with a, with an assassin. <laughs> Cause he's in New York and Colin Quinn's like, Yeah, yeah, no problem. And then like some guy shows up, like he's like, just meet this guy at the deli and at tomorrow at noon. And the guy comes in, like it sits there, like, oh no, he's like waiting for the he's like all nervous waiting for the hitman. And then like a cop comes in, right? And, he, and then he gets real nervous because the the cops coming into the diner, and then he's like, and then when he sat across from me at my table, that's when I was most nervous of all. <laughs> <laughs> the cop leans in. And he's like, I heard you need a hitman. He's like, but you're a cop. <laughs> and he's like, and then he looks down at his suit. He's like, damn it, forgot I was undercover today. <laughs> it's like wait no no I mean I am undercover I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a cricket cop that's what I mean <laughs> and Norm still falls for it that's how he gets sentenced to jail for forty years <sighs> and he's like like it's like how do you go to jail for I didn't even hire a hitman I hired a cop. <laughs> He's all mad about going to jail. And that's where all the rape jokes start. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those some good rape jokes. <laughs> they were the best rape jokes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then he also... The other... He, he also has another dark joke where it's like... Where he's trying to give a speech at a child's funeral. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That was a great, that was a great chapter. <laughs> oh, 
whole chapter. Because apparently, like, the Make-A-Wish kid, when he returns home, <coughs> he makes a miraculous recovery after clubbing a baby seal. <laughs> <laughs> and, um... So, but then, like, after the miraculous recovery gets hit by a bus, <laughs> the kid... Aww. So then Norm has to go to his funeral. <laughs> and it's all... Like, that chapter is crazy because it's, like, depressing, bunch of jokes. Depressing, <laughs> bunch of jokes. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Norm. Yeah. He also does the moth... The, the moth joke in the book. You've heard that one, right? I don't know. The moth goes so. to a podiatri- podi- podiatrist. With podiatrist's office. Do you want to say anything else about Norm and the book? He's the best. End of story. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I gave too much of the book away already. Right. Such Dude, a great. What was your overall impression of the book? If everyone read it. Earth would be a better place. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Bystanders Podcast. Subscribe to us on YouTube at youtube.com slash game music for all. You can find links and show notes from today's episode at thebystanderspodcast.com. Follow us on Instagram at thebystanderspodcast and on Twitter at TBS Podcast. And you can support the show by subscribing to us at patreon.com slash genoboots. Don't forget to buy my book.